Right, so next up, we're going to be going over an application called Circles. It's a way to share photos with friends and family without spamming them via instant messenger or sending them to Facebook where they get used for uh, God knows what as you are tracked with everything that you send. This is developed by Charles. Thank you very much. Take it away. So yeah, today I'll be talking about Circles. Uh, it's an app that we're developing here to help you share uh, with your family and friends and those close to you uh, without big tech listening in on everything uh, you post. So whenever I say, oh yeah, I'm working on this uh, social network application, people say, oh yeah, social media. Um, and nowadays, the thing that first pops into everyone's mind um, is these systems where you can follow all these, um, you know, these creators, these influencers, these personalities out there who are, are not people that you actually have any real relationship with, right? At best, this is like parasocial. Um, and this is not really um, what I'm going for here with Circles. You know, this is uh, the big platforms like TikTok and Instagram um, and Twitter and YouTube and, and everything else. It's kind of become to mean social media. Uh, it's not really what we're going for. Also, if you think back maybe 10, 15 years ago, the big thing were these big social networks like Facebook and LinkedIn and uh, I guess you could put Nextdoor in that category too. And these... Really what it kind of devolved into was, yeah, that guy that you sat next to in high school history class and, you know, he's posting about his dog or something. And that's fine, too, but that's not really the goal of Circles. Um, really what we're hoping for here is to help you connect better with the people that you really know in your life. Maybe not the people that you see every single day because you don't really need an app to keep in touch with people that live in the same house as you. Um, but people that you know closely, you have a real relationship with and that, that you don't get to see every day. That's where you need an app to connect with them. And there are tools out there. Um, mostly when we talk to people, like, what do you use to keep in touch with your parents or your siblings or your cousins or, you know, your best friend from college? People are still using technology from like 2003, right? We're instant messaging people. Uh, people are still using email a lot, believe it or not. And I guess as the sort of the, the social uh, environment out there has gotten more hostile, everybody has retreated into these little private group chats, right? And so this is, this is really the target market that we want to address with Circles, and we want to bring together the best of both worlds, right? We want to connect with the real people in your life at a place where big tech is, is kind of under-investing, right? Um, connecting with real people in your life is not the best way to get you to watch a lot of ads showing you inflammatory content that'll make you angry or anxious or um, kind of manipulate your emotions in any you know, other ways and pretending that there's an infinite stream of, of stuff out there from people that you've never heard of, that's gonna sell a lot of ads. I'm not interested in selling ads, I'm interested in connecting you with real people. Um, yeah, so this is kind of the, the, the ring of people in your life that we're interested in connecting you with. And, you know, if it just so happens that we wind up also connecting you with that next ring out with that guy that you sat next to in high school history class, that's cool too. Why not? Um, <clears throat> so the idea, we want to combine the cool, easy, convenient, fun social features from the 2000 social networks with the encryption that we're getting from the group chats nowadays to have something that's safe enough where you can share pictures of your little kids or you know, of you and your partner at the beach and you don't have to worry about weirdos in Silicon Valley looking at those. And you don't have to worry about whether they're gonna do a good job controlling access to that so other randos on the platform can see it or not. So what we have is an app that on the surface it looks pretty much like any other social sharing app. Um, we have a couple of different social structures that I'll talk about in a sec. We have secure social circles and we have private groups. And I'll go into the difference between those in a, in a little bit. We also have a very basic photo gallery feature here, right, where you can scroll through and you can see all your pictures and um, all the content in all three of these um, kind of different applications that we have is encrypted from end to end. So we as the service provider, we don't get to see any of your pictures. We don't get to read any of your posts. We can't do the, you know, the intensive behavioral profiling and the, the targeted advertising that the other providers do that, that's so creepy and that, that people don't like. We also let you, if you wanna run this on your own server, it's just like email. So you can have your own server where all your data lives 
and you can connect to anyone else on the platform, whether they're on your server or our server or somebody else's. And it all works together pretty seamlessly. Again, like the, the main feature of this is, is a social feed of posts that you can kind of scroll through. You can like things. Uh, I guess you can dislike things. You can put any little emoji reaction you want on anything. Uh, you can reply to stuff in, in your friends' feeds if you want. It does most of the things that you would want out of a, you know, like back in the old days in 2000s Facebook when there were normal people, you know, posting their, their daily lives on there before we all kind of got creeped out by realizing uh, how spied on that is. Okay, so I talked about this project last year, and uh, if you were there a year ago, some of the next part will be a little bit repetitive for you, but I want to talk a little bit about what we've built in the last year. So the big announcement, I guess, is that we've totally rebuilt our iOS application, completely rebuilt from scratch. We spent maybe nine months to a year building a, a brand new client library to speak the matrix protocol on iOS and Apple devices. Um, we put a lot of work into this. We have full support for uh, full end-to-end -end encryption, key backup. Um, so if you lose your phone, you get a new phone, you log in, all your stuff is still there. Uh, you can have multiple devices at the same time. You can have your iPad and your phone uh, and your desktop, and it all kind of works together pretty seamlessly because we put a lot of work in at this foundational layer. And then on top of that, we reworked every single bit of the app to use that, and it's much nicer. We can move much faster now. And so we're, we're sort of back in business out of, uh, after about a year and a half of kind of being stalled on iOS, which is about 80% of our target market for about a year and a half while we did all the hard work to get everything put in place. Uh, at the same time, uh, Michael, who's on my team back here, has been doing some, some great work, uh, kind of shoring up some of the matrix encryption stuff that we're building on. Uh, there's a, a nice proposal that the matrix community has for providing keys to old messages when you invite somebody um, to follow you. So for example, right, I have posts from the, like, the last three or four years maybe. I, I finally figure out, hey, my friend finally got the app. Hey, come on, follow me, follow me in my circle. Uh, and we do a little magic here so that they can see not only what I'm posting now, but they can also see everything back to the beginning of my timeline if that's what I want. He's also done some really great work uh, implementing a, another really cool proposal from the Matrix team uh, that will give us much better security on the thing and make it much harder for anybody to sneak in uh, to spy on your, on your connections. We can talk more about this offline. It's a little bit gory and technical, um, but it's kind of cool that, that Futo here is kind of leading the charge on, on shoring up this, this weakness. Um, we've also done some cool stuff on the back end that you can't really see from the client. We have the world's maybe only two uh, matrix server load testing tools, and we've been able to use, use these to do some really cool experiments, driving traffic to our servers from thousands and thousands and thousands of synthetic users to, to observe what happens with the performance. Um, we've learned a lot from the matrix community about how to set up these servers and make them run really well. Um, quick shout out to our friends Tom and Ricardo and others who have helped us figure this out. Okay. So with that, I want to talk a little bit about the, the two main social structures that we provide to help you connect with your friends in the app. Uh, these, again, are the secure social circles and the private groups. And they're, they're similar, and it's confusing to everybody, and we need to do a better job of explaining this, um, but they really are for two different use cases. So the first one I want to talk about is when you want to publish out updates to everybody that you know, including lots of people who probably don't know each other. But the only thing that really brings these people together, the only thing they have in common, is you. So you know, imagine in the old days when people used to send out like a family newsletter. Maybe, maybe some of you still get these from aunts and uncles and, and, and friends. They'll say, in 2003, the Smith family did blah, 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 blah. And you get it you know, in a letter in the mail. This is kind of the, the new technology version of that. In the meantime, I guess we had like, you know, just your normal Facebook post, right? You post something and the idea is that everybody who's a friend of yours will be able to see it. So the way we do this in our system, we create uh, one place for each person to share their own timeline of, of updates and, and, and pictures and text posts and videos and anything else that they want to share with their people. And what this is behind the scenes, this... The abstraction I want you to think of is an end-to-end -end encrypted conversation. In reality, we implement that it's a matrix room. And so 
that lets us do all the cool things that we can do with Matrix, including you know having this span across multiple servers. We can have you know we can manage the power level of all the different people in this room, so I can either let people reply to me or not. Um, and the again, nice thing about Matrix, unlike the the other uh, encrypted communication tools, all these posts are stored on the server uh, for as long as I want them to be there, and that you know they don't disappear as soon as they're delivered. All right, so these things can hang out, and my friends can see them later. They can scroll through their timeline, and they can see what I've been up to. So again, right, we give each user one of these things where they're going to share their posts for their timeline. And so when Alice wants to share what she's been up to, she invites her friends to join this encrypted conversation. And she has several ways she can do that. So first, maybe uh, she can open up the app. She can go to the... Um, to the settings and then share and this will pop up a QR code and her friend can come over So if you all go and get the circles app after this talk, which I know you all will right? Uh, you can go show your QR code to your friend your friend can scan the QR code and they can request uh, to, to join the encrypted conversation and follow your timeline Alternatively if you don't have your friend in the same room with you you can go to share and you can get a deep link URL you can send that to them over SMS or WhatsApp or email or however you want to send them a link. And if your friend has the app installed, they can tap the link and it'll take them uh, into the app and they can request to, uh, to follow you. And of course, just like in the old days, if you know your friend's username, you can always type it in and send them an, an invite directly. So OK, in our little scenario here, Alice gets her friends all part of her encrypted conversation. Their devices are going to get the keys all behind the scenes. It's all takes care of it. And now, when our friends load up their timeline, they see Alice's posts. In the same way, Alice's friends can invite her to follow them. This is kind of like in Twitter, but it, it's flipped around backwards, right? In Twitter, if I want to follow somebody, I just click the button and I follow them. Here, the other way around. If I want somebody to follow me, I have to invite them first. And again, we require this because of the need to have everything encrypted, right? I only want to give the keys to the people that are, are authorized. That means I need to be involved in deciding who gets to follow me and who doesn't. So Bob here can invite Alice to follow him. And now she can be part of Bob's encrypted conversation of, of posts that he's going to share. The cool thing about it, right, Bob could, Bob could do this with um, any other encrypted messaging app. He could make a, a conversation for all his friends, but it would be a little bit weird, right? Alice joins this thing and she's like, who are all these people? What's going on here? Um, but in circles, we kind of hide that away. All she needs to care about is that this is the place to hear from Bob. In a similar way, right, Bob can be following any number of other people and Alice never knows about it, right? She doesn't need to know or care who he's connected to. Um, and so Bob can have, a, you know, maybe, maybe Jeff and Alice don't get along. That's cool. It's not going to necessarily cause drama for Bob, right? Bob can follow Jeff, Bob can follow Alice. Cool beans, right? No worries, Jeff and, and Alice don't need to see each other. The only one that sees from both of them is Bob. Okay, so moving on, uh, Alice can have other friends connect with her in the app. So Carol says, hey, come on, follow me. Dave says, follow me, so she follows Dave. And then so her device is gonna get the decryption keys for everything posted by uh, Bob, Carol, and Dave. And she can see everything posted by them. And those three encrypted conversations, plus her own encrypted conversation, these four all together, that's her social circle, right? So in the app, when you see your list of circles, uh, so she can tap on friends, and then she'll see all the posts from all those four encrypted conversations. And the app does all the work of putting them all together, organizing it, putting it into one nice, simple chronological timeline that she can scroll through just like it's on Twitter or just like it's on old school Facebook. The other nice thing about this is Alice can have as many of these as she wants, right? She can have one place to share stuff with her family. And the only people who are going to see the see those posts are the people who got the keys or the people who she invited to follow her there. She can have a wholly separate circle, right? Totally different encryption keys for her work colleagues, for her friends, for you know any hobbies that she's into, for her political stuff, for whatever she wants. And none of these people in each of these circles need to know anything about anyone in any of the others, and they can't see anything posted to any of the others unless Alice specifically says, 
hey, I want to invite you to follow me here too. So far, so good? Cool. So then the other, so, um, the other main social structure that we have is not for broadcast so much as it is for like all to all. So this is uh, for a private group. It, this one's really simple. Conceptually, it's just like a Google group or a Yahoo group or, or anybody else who has a group's product, right? It's just for connecting everybody to everybody. And so here, the, the work that we need to do in the app and on the back end, it's really, really simple. We just have one shared encrypted conversation. Everybody's a member of it. Everybody can post to it and everybody can see everything from everybody else, right? Because the, uh, the end to end encryption layer it ensures this. So that, that was like easy mode compared to the, to the Facebook style posting um, that we had with the circles. And so again, you can have as many of these as you want. You can have, you know, you can create a group for any organization. You can invite your friends to join and then you can all share together. And it's gonna have that same encrypted conversation structure underlying every one of these. And we realized at some point, well, hey, while we're here, we have this nice primitive of this end-to-end -end encrypted conversation thing that you know, we build using a matrix room. We can use this to do other cool stuff too. So we have what's admittedly kind of a rudimentary photo gallery built on it. And so again, really, really simple. One encrypted conversation. Everybody who is, has access to the shared gallery is part of that encrypted conversation. And then everybody who's authorized can post their photos in there. And then when you go to that gallery in the app, you can scroll through and you see the unified um, collection of all the photos from everybody. And again, you know, conceptually very simple. But again, um, it's kind of cool, right? You can have all your encrypted photos. We, as the provider of the server, we don't get to spy on any of this. We don't get to build a face recognition model of your kid and you know, detect, detect them in other photos. We don't get to build behavioral profiles of you. We don't get to look for products in the background and decide what kind of ads we're gonna show you. None of that. Okay, uh, at the end here, I wanna talk a little bit about things that we wanna add um, as far as new shiny cool features uh, later this year. So the first thing that we want to fix, um, right now, if you post a video in circles, it works. You can even post a fairly long video if you're patient. Because what we do, we grab the entire movie file, we encrypt the entire movie file, and then we upload the entire movie file. And if your friends want to watch it, they tap the little play button. They need to now download the entire movie file, decrypt the whole movie file, and then they can play it. Um, it's fine, it, work, it works great for short little clips and you, you don't even really notice. Uh, for something like several minutes, it, it's a bit painful right now. So what we wanna do is we wanna switch to something more like, uh, like they do in HLS, where you segment the video up into, into lots of small movie files, you encrypt each of those indip individually, and now if I wanna watch this clip for my friend, I just need to download the first couple of those, I can start playing them, and then the background, the player is gonna be downloading and decrypting as I go. The other neat thing for us as the provider, if you only watch like 10 seconds of this like five minute video, we only have to ship you 10 seconds of, of you know, about 10 seconds of video over the network. So it's less work for us too. The other thing, the, the bigger thing I wanna do is um, finally build a secure indexing and encrypted search system. There has been tons and tons of cool work. I went to grad school with some really amazing brilliant people at Johns Hopkins who've been working on this stuff since about 2005. And it kind of stinks that nobody's really built one. So I want to build uh, an encrypted indexing and search system, and I want to use it in circles to let you securely tag other people as being in your post. I want to let you do the cool thing where you like, this was creepy when Facebook did it, right? You could like draw the little square around somebody's face and be like, this is Bob. And yeah, guess what Facebook used that for, right? They have these huge face recognition models of, of tons and tons of people. I wanna do this in a secure way. I wanna let you do this tagging on your device, uh, store that index securely so only you can read it, and then I wanna let you build um, a, a, a deep neural net model for these faces of people you know, again, completely on your device, store that model encrypted on the server where only you can read it, and then I wanna be able to automatically recognize people in photos and let you go and say, hey, show me all the pictures of Bob. Show me all the pictures of Alice. 
and do this in a secure way where we as the server don't learn anything about it. Uh, your other friends who are in other rooms don't learn anything about it. Um, and it's all completely secure and private. We're hoping to, to work on this in the, in the second half of this year. So for now, that's it. Um, I've got QR codes if you want to try out the app on uh, iOS, iPad. This also works on Apple Silicon Macs. It's my personal favorite way to use the app. And we also have the link to the Google Play Store here. And I think we might have some time for questions. How are we on time? We, got about five minutes. we have about five minutes for questions. So it's, like Google it's a bit like Google Plus, yeah. It's, um, it's been a bit of a struggle to figure out a way to organize all this stuff, have the encryption there and secure, and not have it be totally dorky and weird. It's still a bit dorky and weird. <laughs> and we're trying to make it as smooth as possible. Yeah, thanks. Yes. So do you treat your clients like supercharged matrix clients, or is it something super different? Or our app is a our app is a matrix client, so it works. Um, so if you want to run your own server to to keep your circles stuff on, uh, yeah, you just need a spec compliant matrix server. To be fair, there is only one implementation right now that implements the full spec that we need, uh, but others are they have their support rapidly improving, and it should be better in the future. Yeah. If you're part of a whole bunch of different circles, like maybe for different hobbies or whatever. Yeah. Um, is there a feed that shows you posts like? Like a unified feed of, of everything that's been going on in your world. We don't have that right now. We had it. Um, no, we had something a couple years ago before we rewrote everything where it would just show you like the latest activity from each of your, your spaces. Um, I still kind of miss that sometimes. It's something that we might add again. I don't, this is the kind of feedback that I, I would love to hear if anyone has strong opinions either way. Yeah. Uh, right now we don't have it. Um, you probably could as long as the tour is pretty transparent. Uh, don't think we have support for like having an onion address for the server that you're going to. Yeah. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you.